in my opinion, this is the greatest discovery uh, of uh, in in the medical field in the past 100 years. And my experience includes the beginnings of antibiotics, penicillin, and so on, which was were by all means the most wonderful drugs up to that time and the greatest advance made in medicine. But this is going to influence more people throughout the throughout the world than than the ones that just uh, have their infections treated. Now, this gentleman that's going to make the pre the presentation this evening has made a an intensive study of, of glycobiology. I think that. Uh, uh, he is definitely passionately committed to educating people about everyone he meets uh, on this uh, wonderful new frontier in medical science, glycobiology and glyconutritionals. First of all, before I get started, I just want to tell you, you know, where I'm coming from with this because, you know, we all come from different ways. There's a lot of reasons why, you know, somebody has brought you to this to hear about this technology. And, you know, in, in August of 98, I had a guy that came in where I worked. And I was working 12 hours a day, five, six days a week, and you know, barely living paycheck to paycheck. But my wife, Judy, is a brittle diabetic. She's had two kidney transplants, peripheral neuropathy, which is why they amputate legs on diabetics, diabetic retinopathy, which is why diabetics go blind. She developed an infection in the lining of her heart, had what they called a mitral valve prolapse, or a damaged heart valve. She had dealt with three different forms of cancer. She developed osteoporosis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, arthritis in her hands. And, you know, she was living on antibiotics all the time for something. You know, a good month for us was when we didn't have an ambulance at the house, you know, every week. I mean, if we went a week without an ambulance, that was considered a good week for us. So, you know, I don't know where you all were, you know, at when somebody shared this with you. Um, but, you know, sometimes we, we sort of become open-minded because, you know, we've been doing everything that that, that, that that guy in the white coat and the stethoscope had to offer. And yet the best that the best had to offer... You know, we were being told that we were looking at three to five good years, and Judy was looking at amputation, blindness, or stroke. You know, I always, you know, when I give this illustration um, and share this technology, I always like to kind of lead in with, you know, most people, you know, they form a box, and the sides of the box are the height of your education. The length of the box is your, your experience, your, you know, knowledge, things you pick up along the way. And most people basically form a box, and that's right there where they live. And if something happens over here, you know, outside that box, you know, we say to ourselves, well, you know, that's too good to be true. Well, that's just not possible. And my, my point is this, you know, what I'm going to share with you is probably something that's outside your box. Because, I mean, it was way outside my box. It took me about three and a half months to believe that what I'm going to share with you tonight was even true. So, you know, getting onto this technology, you know, what this gentleman told me when I went out to his house and sat down and he began to explain this, he said that, you know, in the late 70s, the FDA was, was scrutinizing a lot of this aloe vera stuff that was on the market. I mean, we know about aloe vera, right? I mean, Grandma told us about it. You know, it's, it's, we keep one by the stove in case we burn ourselves. So it's the most noted healing component on the face of the earth, as far as plants are concerned. I mean, it's mentioned five times in the Bible. That ought to raise curiosity with people. So there were a lot of claims being made about the healing properties and the capabilities of aloe vera. So a group of investors commissioned a doctor from Carrington Labs to find the active healing component in aloe vera. I mean, what was it that made it so powerful? Well, first of all, he knew it had to be what they call a live, pre-digested molecule. In other words, when you break that leaf off an aloe vera plant, it lasts about two to four hours, then it gets all hard and flat, and it doesn't work anymore. Only live in the plant will it work in the human body. So in 1981, he identified a molecule by the name of Manos, and he filed over a hundred patents worldwide on the stabilization of that molecule that kept it live, just like it was in the plant. Next, they, you know, once they compiled all this and stabilized this, this was ultimately taken to another doctor, who at the time was head of Parkland Hospital, chief of pathology, one of the highest paid medical doctors in southwestern United States, and was given this molecule blindly and told to test it. Well, you know, I mean, his first comment was, tested on what? And he was told anything and everything. We just want to know what it does. We don't really know. Well, you know, in the early 80s, AIDS was a big issue. And so they begin with a large group of AIDS patient, patients, and they begin to administer this foul-tasting, stabilized form of this molecule known as mannos in a liquid form. And to their astoundment, in less than 90 days, over 70% of those patients became asymptomatic. 
no symptoms, no signs of the AIDS. That was ultimately given to, to three more groups of doctors, same thing, same test, blindly, and same results. Next, they moved into what they called predictability studies, which basically meant that if you had a patient that had a blood work of ABC, that they could predict he'd get an XYZ type of an outcome where if a different patient had a different type of blood work, that he would get a different type of an outcome. And they were 96% effective at predicting the outcome with each individual patient. Now, for you scientific gurus, that's astounding, that anything in medical science, they can predict that high with each, each patient individually. Now, you gotta kinda imagine where these two doctors' heads are at. I mean, if anybody came up with anything in the, in the early 80s that would impact AIDS, I mean, it'd be front page news, right? So they're thinking they're going to be on the cover of Time magazine over this. So they compiled all of this research and they presented this at a symposium in the mid-80s. And they were virtually laughed out of this symposium. Because mannose is a long chain carbohydrate. It's a sugar molecule. Now all biochemistry has told us all these years that all carbohydrates, they convert to glucose and, and, and they provide energy at the cell level. I mean, it's, it's kind of like the Rodney Dangerfield of nutrition. I mean, it gives you energy, but who cares, right? So they've never really given it the respect. And, and here was a sugar molecule that was having absolute profound effects on the human immune system. And they didn't even really look at it. So these two researchers, really what they continued doing was they were trying to look at where does mannose come in in the body? What does it do? How does it affect the body? So that's what they were continue, continuing their research on. At the science, same, same time that these two researchers were doing their research, there was another doctor, a Dr. Gunter Blobel, a German researcher doing his research right here in the United States. Now, Dr. Blobel was analyzing the body at the cellular level. Now, let me back up just a minute. You know, in the early 90s, the technology was birthed to where you could look at an individual cell in, in, under a microscope. I mean, prior to the 90s, there wasn't a powerful enough scope to really look at one individual cell. And if you ever looked at a cell under a very intense microscope, it kind of looks like a, like a round, hard piece of candy that maybe a child has been sucking on and drops out of their mouth and it rolls around for a few days and you find it underneath the coffee table and you pick it up and it's all gooey and sticky and it's got all this hair-like stuff coming off of it. That's exactly what a human cell looks like under a very intense microscope. It looks like it's growing hair kind of like a cotton ball. It's got all this fuzz coming off of it. Well, Dr. Blobel of Germany identified what was called cell surface proteins, which are nothing but little protein molecules that surround the surface of every single cell in the human body, every cell. And that connected to it was an address or a zip code of molecules. And through this little address or this zip code of molecules here, is how the human body facilitated communication. It's how the good guy recognized the bad guy, could get the immune system in to kill it, or in some cases recognized the good guy that was damaged in need of repair. Because Dr. Blobel's theory was that healthy cells make healthy tissue. Healthy tissue makes healthy organs. Healthy organs make healthy systems. And if your systems are working synergistically together and are healthy at the cellular level, then you don't have a health problem unless you get run over by a big truck. <laughs> and that's trauma and injury. We're not talking about that. You know, I believe that the, the emergency room is where God works through man's hands. I mean, there's miracles by the second in trauma and injury. There are no miracles in illness and disease today. It's a virtual catastrophe across the board. Dr. Blobel of Germany won the Nobel Prize for Medicine in October of 99 for what I just said. So this is not hype. It's pure fact. It's just that most people don't know this. But Dr. Blobel won the Nobel Prize for Medicine for the discovery of cell surface proteins that in conjunction with an address or a zip code of molecules is how the body facilitated communication, that's how your immune system works, and that's how the body heals itself. That's a pretty profound statement, isn't it? Now we know the body heals itself, right? I mean, you go in for surgery and the doctor tells you, you know, go home, take it easy, give your body time to heal. Or you drop a brick on your foot and a few choice words and a week or two later, all of a sudden that toe heals. So, I mean, we know the body heals itself. And medical science has known that too. They just didn't know how.